Is concrete sustainable? I'm gonna cover that in this video today. My name is Tyler Lay and I have a YouTube channel all about concrete. Concrete happens to be the second most used commodity in the world. You know what number one is? It's water. Six and a half billion cubic meters of concrete are placed every year. That's about a cubic meter for every human on the earth every single year. That's 53 billion trash cans of concrete. That's a sidewalk that would go around the earth 1,300 times. And that's not total, that's not total amount of concrete. That's how much concrete is placed every single year. So is concrete sustainable? Now my definition of sustainable is, should we keep using it? Everything we use, especially things that we use in large volumes, they are gonna create pollution. They're gonna have a cost to them, but is it worth it? Is it worth it to keep doing? And I like to think of it like this. I like to look at the value of whatever material I'm talking about, and I'm saying it's gonna have a certain amount of benefit and it's gonna have a certain amount of cost. And if the benefits outweigh the costs, then it is worth doing. And once the costs get too high, we should stop. We always need to be thinking about this in all kinds of different situations. So let's talk about the cost first. Now, if we look at what concrete costs, I'm gonna compare them with these metrics. This is what it costs financially. Five cents, that's not very much. 8% of the world's CO2 is from the production of concrete. And in this last one, this is the world's energy that's spent in producing that material, 0.3%. So how does that compare to another material we might know? Like steel. Steel costs three times as much, 15 cents per pound. At least that's raw steel, that's unfinished steel. The global CO2 production is the same, 8%. And the world's energy, 1.3%. It's about the same amount of CO2 production and a lot higher amount of energy and a lot higher cost. Now, the one thing that's not captured in these metrics is that we use 27 times more concrete than steel. We use 27 times more concrete than steel. So you would expect it to have a larger carbon footprint. You would expect it to have a larger amount of usage of energy. But it doesn't. But concrete is everywhere. Could you have gotten to work today? Could you be watching this video today without concrete? You know something else that's important is water. Now we're always worried about having clean water but we're not always worried about or concerned about how much energy goes in to producing clean water. Concrete actually costs a hundred times more per pound than water, okay? It's got a comparable CO2 footprint, 5% for water, 8% for concrete. But as far as energy goes, the amount of energy you need for to produce water, the world's energy consumption to produce water is huge, 13%. That's massive. But you don't ever hear people complaining about the sustainability of clean water. Why not? I think we need to think about concrete in a new way. I think we need to think about it in terms of this benefit to cost ratio. Do we worry about water? No, because the benefits are so high that I don't care about the costs. I'm not saying concrete's the same, but it has a ton of benefit. Here's the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, and its main structural system is made out of concrete. It would not have happened. We could not have had this place of business, of living, of awesomeness, if we did not have concrete. Here's the Hoover Dam and the Hoover Dam Bypass. Arguably the most iconic concrete structure in the world. Our dams produce electricity 
save people's lives and help us produce water. I think they're a huge benefit. Think about the bridges in your life. Think about having to drive around a river until you find a low spot. Oh my gosh, that would be awful. I just want to get there and I want to get there now. And bridges help us do that. So I think there's a lot of benefits, but there's one thing that we need to realize in this cost benefit ratio, that if we can tip it, if we can modify it, things just change the game. There's absolutely no argument that if we can add time to this benefit, if we can make these benefits last generations, there isn't any argument about it. Here's kind of an analogy. This is a chest that my granddad left me. It's around 80 years old, and it's one of my prized possessions. I love it. I love it because every time I use it, I think of him. And it's just there. It's solid. It's something I can count on. Now, does it have some problems? Sure it does. As you can see over here, it's got a little wavy metal on the front. The wood's splitting a little bit. If you look at the sides, there's scuffs and scars. Some of the legs aren't on right, but it doesn't bother me. I love it because it reminds me of him. And it's something that I know that I can give to my kids and they'll be able to give to their kids. Why don't we think about our concrete projects in the same way? Why don't we think of them as building them for our grandkids? for our children, our children's children, and not only that, for our neighbors, and for their children, and for their grandchildren. That is the kind of legacy that we have a chance to leave behind when we build our concrete structures correctly. You might say, what are you talking about? Is this even possible with concrete? Can you even do this with concrete? I'll give you some examples. Here's the theater in Paris, the very first theater ever built out of reinforced concrete in 1913. It's over 100 years old. Here's the Ingalls building, Cincinnati, Ohio. Still, both these structures are being used today. 114 years old, built in 1904. Here's the Saigon Tobel Bridge, an amazing, beautiful, elegant structure in the Swiss Alps, 88 years old. That's unbelievable. In one of the worst environments on the planet. When concrete's done right, in my opinion, it's one of the most sustainable building materials in the world. The problem is when we don't do it right. The problem is when we miss an opportunity. So why don't we always get 100 years plus? What's missing? What's holding us back? Well, I have these reasons listed. There may be more. Maybe you can think of some and list them in the comments below. But sometimes we just want to build fast. We don't care about how long it lasts. We just want to go. Sometimes cost is an issue. We don't have the money to really make it last. That's okay. We don't need everything to last 100 plus years. Sometimes we don't have the knowledge. Sometimes we don't, we don't know how. That's not an excuse. And that's one reason why I have this YouTube channel. That's one reason why I want to devote myself to making more YouTube videos about the durability of concrete. And sometimes we just don't want to, and that's sad. That's when people know, that's when people have the time, that's when they have the money, but they just don't want to. That doesn't happen very often, but it happens. So who suffers when we don't produce durable concrete? Who suffers? Number one, the customer does. The people paying for the concrete, but our entire construction industry does because it's a lost opportunity to leave a legacy, to leave something that we're all gonna be proud of every one of us, whether we built it or not. But society, we miss out on the opportunity to use that. And you do. You miss out. You need to help us. You need to demand great, long-lasting concrete. You need to expect it. And be ready to pay a little more for it. But it's going to be worth it. Hey, thanks everybody for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave me a comment below. Tell me what you think about the sustainability of concrete or what you think we can do to make it long last, last longer. Take care. Bye.